opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick buzz's youtube channel and press that bell icon now it's the second semi-final of the icc women's world cup and it's taking place in christchurch hagley oval unlike the first semi-final which was a day game it will be a day night fixture and We've got to remember, five years ago, these two teams met in the semi-final, South Africa versus England. It was a nail-biter. South Africa should have progressed through to the final, but Anya Shrubsol was able to hit the winning runs there in Bristol. Fast forward five years, they meet again. Time to preview here on Crick Buzz. Let's talk about the strengths of both of the side. England, they had a horrendous start to the tournament. Things were not gelling. It kind of came off the back of the ashes over in Australia. They didn't win the first match against Australia and they probably thought, here we go again. And then the fact that they couldn't get a victory, they had all of their hard matches up front. Then against New Zealand, a do or die game, they were able to find a way to get through, even though New Zealand fought hard. It is scary for South Africa to think that England are now starting to find form. Still question marks about their top order of Tammy Beaumont and Danny Wyatt. I think the highest they've scored is 31 as an opening pair. If they get that right against the best bowling attack in the competition, then England looks certain to get into another ICC Women's World Cup final. As for South Africa, they're a side that have been there and thereabouts. And I, I knew I had a feeling that they would absolutely take one of those semi-final positions. The fact that Dana van Niekerk, their skipper, is not here, just shows you the depth that they've been able to create over the last five years. Sune Luce's skipper has done a great job leading the side, but also scoring valuable runs in that number four position. Laura Wolfart is the first player to score 400 runs in this edition of the World Cup. Can she go on and get that elusive triple figure? Lizelle Lee hasn't fired for them. That's probably the danger for England. South Africa haven't clicked from a batting perspective, but if they do, watch out. As for their fast bowling unit, it's pretty impressive. The ace card for South Africa are their fast bowling unit of Shabnam Ismail, Marazan Kap, Ayabonga Kaka, who take plenty of wickets. And the fact that Masabata Class comes back in because she missed a few games because of a shoulder injury, they look a different side when she's there. You've got four seamers. Then you've got the overs that can be shared between Sune Luce and Chloe Tryon. It's the best bowling unit of fast bowlers in the competition, I believe. The fact that they can just nag away at a good line, good length. They bowl exceptionally well in the death. And Shabna Mizma, look out for her second and third spell. She will bowl short, she will bowl quick, and she will have the English batters hopping and skipping at the crease. For England, their race is they know how to win. <laughs> they, their backs were against the wall against New Zealand. There was a lot of wobbles at the back end, but they were able to scrape through. Then they've started to feel a bit better as a group. Things are starting to click. Danny Wyatt was able to, to peel off a match-winning performance, 70-odd runs. And like I said, they know how to win close matches. They've been there before. They've won ICC tournaments before. That is one of the reasons why South Africa should be very wary against England. Playing 11 for both sides. I don't think they make any changes, albeit let's hope that there aren't any injuries. Um, we've seen that Elise Perry couldn't play in the first semi-final. You hate to see someone who has such, who could have such a, a big impact on the game not take to the field. Catherine Brunt is back to their best. That's a good sign. Um, so England, no doubt, will go with the same side. Uh, as for South Africa, Masabata class coming in, perfect. They look great. The only question is they still haven't got a frontline spinner. So what can Chloe Tryon and Sunine Luce do? Can they provide some economical overs for the South African team? For England, I'm gonna go with Sophia Dunkley. I really enjoyed watching her play. I saw her make her debut 
against India in their home summer. I was disappointed with how she came through during the ashes, but I've been so pleased to see her show some resilience and some fight and provide the runs that England need. She is the future of England cricket. Uh, the fact that she can absorb the pressure and find ways to still score and put pressure back onto the opposition, that's all good signs. As for South Africa, I think you've got to go for Marazan Cap. She is just the type of player that is playing her best cricket, not just from a bowling point of view, but from a batting point of view. She has labelled herself the finisher. Well, maybe, okay, we've labelled her the finisher. And she's so resilient, steely determination, being able to assess everything. You look at the game that she played against England in the round matches and she defended Eccleston and targeted the other bowlers. She will be someone that England will be very, very wary about. For England, I'll give this to England. If you win the toss, make South Africa bat first. They're on a winning streak of 16 ODIs in a row where they've chased successfully. They like it. They feel that they've got the depth, the fact that they've got Chloe trying to go big to find the boundaries. Then they've got Trisha Chetty as well, who's also providing some really important runs in crucial times. Mignon Dupree has, get, has finally got runs as well. So everything's going right from a runs perspective, but I'd flip it. Can they defend? Can their bowlers cope with the pressure? I know they were able to do it against Pakistan in Taronga, but can they do it against England in a semi-final? This is close. This is gonna be a close match. I mean, this is the ICC Women's World Cup 2022. All matches have really, literally gone down to the wire. I have a feeling that South Africa may just get ahead. I think they've got a little bit more depth and more players in form. And if Lizelle Lee can go big at the top and everyone else continue to do what they've been doing, then South Africa will find themselves in the, their first ICC Women's World Cup final.